Huskies in control, up two sets, trying to finish it off and win a MAC championship and move on to the NCAA tournament. There's definitely that feeling, like that pit in your stomach, like, oh my gosh, this is it. Off Butterfield, gets it off the block, gets it to Kirsch, this one's not going to be sent back. And we have match point here and a tournament championship point coming up. I don't know, I kind of just was like, this could be it, you know? And I didn't want to think negatively like that, but when it comes down to that point and you're a senior, you just can't help but think that. Um, well, I was like a mess because I was over there praying, like on the sideline. I was like, you can't lose faith, can't lose faith. I mean, I think we were all kind of shocked. Like we were all trying so hard and we wanted it so bad, but like things just weren't clicking. I mean, I get chills just like thinking about it right now because it was just so like emotional. And they had two points to win it. And in the back of my mind, you can't help but think this could be it. This could be the end of our season. Everything that we've worked for could be over. That moment, you know, we're, I'm sitting on the bench and uh, uh, it's a 24-22 for Northern Illinois in the third set. They have two match points. Honestly, I didn't believe we were going to be able to come back. And I'm already thinking, you know, what do I tell the team? Uh, you come so close and, uh, you know, uh, you don't win. Uh, what am I going to tell them? The match came down to one pivotal moment, a moment that would define their season. Before we started our season, we had a team meeting and we came together and the coaches left the room and we, um, we wrote on the board a lot of our goals and we kind of narrowed it down and we made a mission statement for our season. Well, we had several goals. Uh, one of them was to win all of our home games. The other was obviously to win the MAC and the other was to just make BGSU history and get into the NCAA tournament. When you first make those goals, it's like, you know, you're setting the bar, you're really trying to reach them, but as the season went on, I think um, we just expected to go there. We all started to really believe in our goals that we wrote down at the beginning of the year. Coach was talking to us uh, at the beginning of the year and she said, I want you guys to have a motto that, you, that described your team and the only thing holding us back as a team was not our physical ability, but like where we were mentally. And so believe big just kind of includes the aspect of always dreaming big and knowing that we do have the ability to, you know, break records and win the MAC championship. We liked how the big incorporated BG and we knew that this year was going to be big because we had a lot coming into it with the new coaching staff and returning a lot of the same players. I actually came up with that one. Um, I kind of stole it off of the, all the BGSU commercials that are like dream big, like the dream BG and the I was little. We just all wanted to embrace it, uh, the new coaching staff, the new changes and buy in and just believe that we could do um, what people didn't think we could. We just had a lot of big goals this season and with the new coaching staff coming in, we just knew that we could achieve what we wanted to. Following the retirement of legendary coach Denise Vandewally, BGSU announced the hiring of Daniela Tomich to fill her shoes. Tomich came to Bowling Green after compiling a 158-61 record in seven seasons at FIU, winning three Conference Coach of the Year awards. With her staff in place, Tomich began the work of developing a young but talented team that had gone 27 and 36 over the two previous seasons. It was a big adjustment, you know, it was kind of like the other preseasons and just seasons up till now had all been kind of similar. We didn't really know exactly what to expect um, coming into this year, but um, we had high hopes. And the new coaching staff definitely changed our game. I think refined is a good word. They simplified everything. They made everything easy to understand. There was also a mental aspect that I think we all really appreciated. I've never been pushed that hard physically or mentally, um, and I would say for most of the girls, that's how it was for them too. They held us to the highest standard in the gym, and that really helped us hold each other to a higher standard. The coaching staff just worked with us a lot on the process and the little things, and they always told us that the little things make the big things, and we just kept that through our, through our mind the whole season. I would say it helped in ways that everything was new and fresh and I feel like everybody like understood that and everybody wanted to like change for the better. We're all excited to um, kind of have a fresh start. I know I was excited to have a fresh start. The regular season started slowly as the Falcons dropped their first three matches before showing some potential in a four set win over Indiana. After a five-set loss to Utah in the BYU-Nike Invitational, Bowling Green had a record of just two and six. 
but that loss to the Utes may have signaled the change. It was the only time the team would lose a five-set match all year, and it began a string of 20 wins in the next 24 contests. Bowling Green quickly made it known they would be a factor. The Falcons swept Ohio and began a dominant string of matches. Bowling Green lost to just one set in its first five conference matches to roll to a 5-0 start in league play. I think our atmosphere at home definitely changed this year. Everybody was excited to come to volleyball games. We had a great student body. The Falcon Fanatics brought in a lot of students. There's a bigger sense of pride when you're at home, and the home court advantage with our, all of our fans, all of the community that come out and support is just phenomenal. I mean, you can't really put it into words until you're standing there and you hear all the people that are there supporting you, knowing I'm going to get this serve over the net, I'm going to ace that other team, and these people are going to really appreciate that, and I want to do it for them and for my team. As the season went on, we just were making these strides, and I think sometimes it was surprising to us. At 8-0 in MAC play, the Falcons finally lost for the first time a four-set defeat to Ball State, the team's only home loss of the year. When Bowling Green began play against the MAC West, the road got tougher, but the Falcons got grittier. In succession, the Falcons defeated Western Michigan, Oakland in a non-conference tilt, Eastern Michigan, and Central Michigan in five sets. BGSU went into the final match of the regular season with a 13-2 conference mark and an opportunity to win the MAC regular season championship by defeating Northern Illinois. The teams split the first two sets, but the Huskies found a way to grind out 25-19, 25-18 victories in the next two sets to earn the win and drop Bowling Green to second place in the league. We kind of felt actually uh, that we underachieved after the regular season because we were in position three times to win the regular season. Uh, and we didn't do that. So it kind of left a bitter taste in our mouths when uh, you know, we uh, lost uh, the last regular season match against Northern Illinois and that was uh, our last opportunity to win a regular season. I took the Northern loss at Northern really hard and I talked to Tucker a couple days after, like I still can't shake this loss. Like I just, it's burning, you know, that was our chance to win regular season and we blew it. It was awful, to be honest. Um, I know all of us, we were, just thinking, I mean, I know I did a lot of just sitting down, like analyzing, like what happened? What could we have changed? What could I have done better? In the MAC tournament quarterfinals, Bowling Green faced an Eastern Michigan squad that it had battled from behind to beat in five sets during the regular season. The Falcons picked apart Eastern Michigan in a 25-18, 25-20, 25-18 win. Waiting in the semifinals was another team that BGSU had beaten in five sets during the regular season. Western Michigan. In the fourth set, Bowling Green was just four points from defeat, trailing 21-16. The Falcons then reeled off seven straight points, and Caitlin Skinner and Leah Shaw blocked an attack that forced a fifth set. With the memory of six consecutive five-set victories fresh in their minds, Bowling Green scored the first six points of the deciding frame and rolled to a 15-10 win to advance to the MAC championship. Waiting for Bowling Green in the MAC championship was none other than Northern Illinois, the team that had cost the Falcons the regular season championship. I mean, there was a pretty bad taste in our mouth from just, we'd seen them two weeks before, so I think there was, we we're still like a little you know, salty about that. We knew that we could have played better. Their staff, the Northern staff knew that we could have played better. I mean, there were just little things that we really we're frustrated that we didn't perform as we wanted to. And to have a second chance, how often does that come around? Definitely had revenge on our mind. We were fired up to play them. It was like another chance to show them that we're better. You know, we have to go in for revenge. Like, they took it away from us. We tasted defeat. We knew what it felt like to have a MAC championship regular season title within our grasp, and we let it go. So I think we were, we were ready for Northern. We wanted another chance, and we were hungry for that win. It was almost like meant to be a chance to redeem ourselves when it really mattered, because if we had just won the regular season and didn't win the MAC championship, that means nothing. You can't go to the NCAAs with that. Like a lot of people say that everything happens for a reason, and I, I feel like that was a perfect moment. You know, they were fresh in our, our, fresh in our mind. We knew what was coming. We knew what to expect. We knew how to, what changes to make. Early on, Northern Illinois was the aggressor and rolled the wins in the first two sets. The Falcons would go into the locker room down two sets to none. We were all like, what is going on? We have nothing to lose. Like, are we serious right now? We've come this far to just lose in three games. Just that frustration that they were doing the same thing that we couldn't stop. We realized this is it. This is last chance. There's no looking back. We're still, this hanging that banner is still very real if we find a way to turn it around now. We always have like, 
four or five minutes by ourselves as just the team before our coaches come in and I think we all just sat down and we're like okay like this is not going the way we wanted it to but we just need to calm down like we got to stay together we have to do this or else it's over and then coach came in and gave a big boot to the uh, water water carrier and she really let us have it that kind of shook everyone up and I think that was the change that we needed it shouldn't take that push, but it took that push for it to like really sink in and be like, we have to do this, it's now or never. It was a deja vu, unfortunately. You know, I saw the same team. We came uh, out uh, very tentative, you know. We were not playing as hard as we should have played, especially in the finals. Uh, it was very frustrating, you know, just in a week uh, we lost to them at Northern um, and now we see them again in the finals, it's the biggest game of our season and we are doing the same things and it was very frustrating. So, you know, we were glad to have that 10 minute break and I just challenged them, you know, I, I told them, you know, you should be tired of losing. Don't be satisfied. Don't be satisfied just being here. This is your chance. You know, for our four seniors, this was the last chance for them to win the MAC championship. Things looked even worse when Northern Illinois took a 24-22 lead in the third set. Standing just one point from victory, the Huskies could taste the MAC championship. I think we just didn't, like I said earlier, we didn't have another choice. We'd been there before, backs were against the wall, coach got us fired up, we were fired up for each other, and you look back on it and you say, I didn't come this far to go home in three. You know, that's just unacceptable. I remember bringing the team together after that point that put us down 22-24 and saying, it's not over yet. We had to keep fighting, and I think that we're really good at that. When we see, a, I've said it before, a do or die situation, we're really good at knowing what we have to do to win that game. I think after we separated, it was just a straight across the board, like, no, we're winning, we're going to do this. I was in the front row um, at the end of the game when we were down 24-22, and I just remember telling Laura, and I looked back at the team, and I think a couple other girls chimed in, and we all kind of huddled together, and simultaneously we're like, if we're going down, we are going down clawing and scraping and swinging. I was actually serving during that. I had to serve during both of their game points. I just tried to remain as calm as possible. Serving is one of my main jobs. I don't get to play anything in the front row. I don't get to hit. So I knew I just had to go in and do my job for the team. Bowling Green would not yield. Northern Illinois had an attack error and Lindsey Butterfield followed with a kill to tie the score at 24. After a Northern Illinois timeout, Butterfield had another kill and one more attack error gave the Falcons the 26-24 win and momentum. I feel like everything just kind of, at that last moment, just kind of turned into our favor. It was really odd because they're a really strong team and they weren't really playing to finish and we jumped on every advantage or everything that they gave us, we jumped on it. Maybe Northern was expecting us to crumble and expecting us to take the easy way out and we just all got collected together and we just said no. You know, we're, we're going to fight our way back, we're going to go down skinny, we're going to go down hard. When we won the third set, it was much, you know, everybody took a deep breath because that was live or die pretty much in, in the sports arena. That just lit a huge fire and it, we didn't look back the rest of the game. Bowley Green jumped out to an 11-5 lead in the fourth set and never looked back, rolling to a 25-20 victory to force another fifth set. I feel like the momentum had totally changed over those those last two games. So when we came to the fifth game, we had all the momentum and we had all the confidence. And you could look across the net and you could see that Northern was done. Um, I was really oddly calm. I just knew that we could do it. And looking at our track record of fifth set matches all year, we knew we won every single one except for one at the very beginning of the year. We were really confident going into that fifth. And you can look at everyone's face. It was just a calm. It's. I feel like that's been our strength the whole season in fifth sets. We're just very calm, and I think that's just the confidence we have in each other and in our staff. At that point, the Falcons knew it was over. BGSU scored the first four points of the fifth set and then had another 8-0 run, finally getting a Lindsey Butterfield kill for the 15-4 win and the MAC championship. When, like, the last ball dropped, it was like surreal like I don't even know how to explain it um, obviously when we win we all lost control bodily control and we all collapsed and you know and that's the best part that's what you see on TV that's what you hear about it was just so like emotional and uh, just like it was such a weird feeling because we knew that we could do it but actually doing it was just indescribable it was incredible it just it was like a 
sigh of relief. We've been training so hard since when the new coaches came in January and it all led up to that moment and that was our ultimate goal of the season. All the hours that we put in, it just, it was for that and it just is really special to have like an actual moment to like take all, everything that you've worked so hard for and take it all in. It just felt like everything I had worked for for the past three years, like it had finally come true and I think that at that moment I realized what had happened. To be able to call ourselves MAC champions is like the greatest thing in the world. We worked so hard like all four years to make it to this moment and we finally did it and it was just a like, sigh of relief like oh my gosh we really did it. We really said what we were going to do. The Falcons would go on to defeat Yale in five sets for the program's first ever NCAA tournament victory before number one Penn State defeated Bowling Green to end the magical season. It was quite a season for the Falcons. History was made, dreams were realized, and the Falcons learned to believe big. It was just amazing. Like We talked all season about leaving a legacy, and um, I definitely feel really blessed because um, I was a part of a team that had an opportunity to do really great things. Sometimes I'm even like, now, I'm, I'm still thinking about like, wow, we actually made history, we did that, and I don't even know if it's set in to me yet until probably that banner falls and actually look at it and say, there's the physical evidence that we actually did make history. Year overall was just a, a, a dream year. Uh, it was a great season. Uh, you know, we will remember uh, 2012 season forever. Uh, I think our players are going to uh, say the same. Uh, it was just uh, a perfect example of perfect script, I guess, how a, a team can finish their season. And I think it's really awesome, you know, when I come back years from now, when I see the old players, when I see the new players, when I bring my kids back, it's like concrete evidence. Like there's the banner my team and I have put up there together and it's awesome and it's, it, it's like a dream. It really is a dream come true.